So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of Flywoo's latest flight controllers. So let's get started. So Flywheel has been releasing a couple new flight controllers and it's their Goku model line. Some are 30 by 30, some are 20 by 20. We've actually just recently covered the 20 by 20 and it has just about the same exact features as this full fledged 30 by 30, which is pretty insane. And you might be like, well, what are those features? Well, one, it has a nine volt regulator for your video transmitter. And if you don't know what that does, that gives you a very high probability to give you very good video feed uh, instead of having those lines in them. And it does help reduce the overall noise coming into your video feed, which is really great. Not only that, it has dual camera switching capability. So you can actually install two video cameras on this. And I believe it also has a barometer somewhere. And it also has a barometer, as you can tell right here. Also, the OSD is rocking really nice fat tantalum capacitors. And we also have some memory for black box log. This is a 16 megabit or 16 megabyte flash memory here, which is really great, especially if you're into black box logging, since this does not have an SD card expansion. So uh, this also comes in two flavors, believe it or not. One comes with dual gyro, but it's not using sensor fusion dual gyro. And what do I mean by that? Well, sensor fusion means it'll be two of the same gyros, for example, two MPU 6000s and one set, an offset from the other, and it kind of just averages the difference between them in order to clean out some of the gyro data, which gives you an overall supposedly better flying quadcopter. I still haven't personally tested it, but it sounds like a nice idea. However, uh, with the dual gyros that can be purchased here is basically you just pick this one or that one. So it comes with the ICM gyro and it also comes with the MPU 6000 gyro. By default, it's MPU 6000 gyro. And personally, that's what I'd recommend the most because if you take the dual gyro option, even though you could choose them, it's gonna be about that big. It's gonna, it's gonna gain some weight and it's also gonna be a lot larger to fit it into tight areas. So keep that in mind. And that would go right here on top of the flight controller. You'll see it in the pictures. I have it linked down below. All right, so now we're gonna cover how to connect this guy into your quadcopter if you have purchased it and you don't know how to connect it. Now it should be installed into your quadcopter like this with the front being here where your camera is. So that's very important that you install it that way or else it'll never fly unless you know what you're doing. So let's start off with the video transmitter. Now the video transmitter is going to connect up in this corner right here and everything is pretty much well labeled to be honest. So here we have ground. This would be the black wire for your video transmitter. This would be the nine volt. So this is going to be the red wire for your transmitter, the second pad right here. So it's gonna be giving it nine volts, which is really great. Also the video output here, this is going to be the yellow wire and T, what is this T3? and T5, I think. And this is T5 right here. This would be used in order to use some sort of a smart audio protocol, which will allow you to change your uh, video transmitters power and channel through the on-screen display, which is very convenient and very useful, but you don't have to use it. But again, it's really nice that it's thought of and it's actually put into place here. Very thoughtful right there. And here where it gets a little bit interesting. So this is the camera section. Usually you would just see three paths, but here we have five. Uh, so why would we have five? Well because of the extra features here. So let's start from this side right there. So right here would be the ground. Now, since this board takes two cameras, and if you are going to be connecting two cameras, what you'd wanna get is get the black wire from both of the cameras, put them together, and solder them to the ground here. Next, we have the five volt, I believe, or just nine volt. So the next one down is the five volt here. And I'd do the same thing. I'd get the red wire from the first camera. If you're not du using dual cameras, you don't have to do this. You just put one camera. But if you're using dual cameras, then you're gonna have to take the red wire from both, put them together, solder them together, and then stick them right here. So now both cameras are powered. Then we have C1 and C2. Now, again, if you're not using two cameras, just connect yours to C1. If you are using two cameras, then connect your primary camera that you want to be the main camera when it boots up to C1 and the other camera to C2, which would be the yellow wires. And here's the OSD control. So this will allow you to control the OSD of the camera, but I don't know how it works when you're running two cameras. So I'd probably just install it if I was doing it on one camera. So keep that in mind. So you have that option also here, which is really nice. Now let's go to this side. So next thing we're gonna cover is the receiver. Now what's really nice about an F7, since this is an F7, hopefully you have the F7 one, yeah. So this is the F7. Um, it doesn't matter where you put your IBUS spectrum or SBUS signal for your receiver. Uh, it'll go on any R pad, very important, any R pad here. F4s, they have specific places for IBUS and SBUS. SBUS receiver, how would we connect it? Well, here we have ground, which would be the black wire. Next we have the five volt, 
And then we have RX1. So RX1 is where S bus would be connected. Now, if you had Flysky rocking I bus, same exact concept, ground, black wire, 5 volt, and then we also have the RX1, which would be the I bus signal. Now, if you're using Spectrum, kind of the same thing, but the only difference is going to be the voltage. We would give it ground, which is the black wire, the 3.3 volt, which is going to be the red wire for your Spectrum receiver. And again, you would stick the signal on RX1, which is really nice. I really like that in F7. And this pad up here in the corner would be a dedicated RSSI. So if you don't know what that is, just leave it. But some receivers output a dedicated signal. So you know how much signal you have on your OSD uh, from your receiver, and that's where you'd want to put it. Uh, next down the line after the RX1, we have the TX1. So those would go together. Um, then we have the UART2. So we have uh, R2 and TX2. And then we have UART3 and UART4. And then here, I believe we have another five volt and then ground. So we have another five volt and ground here if you wanted to use them for something else. And we here we have the SCL and SDA, uh, which can be used for other sensors. Not a lot of people know what these go for, but it's, it's good when you put a GPS with a magnometer, which means it has a compass. Usually the compass would install here, and usually those tell you where to install them. Now we come down to the bottom part. So most people are probably going to be using um, four in one ESCs. Now you got to take something into consideration about powering this board up. Since it has a nine volt regulator, this will need battery voltage or the nine volt regulator will not power on because it needs voltage higher than the nine volt in order to step that down. It won't step up five volts for you. So this takes battery voltage. It takes up to an 8S, which is also really great. So where would you power this up? Well, there's a couple ways. We can use either this connector right here, or we can just actually solder them all out here. And I'd recommend you solder them out here if you don't want to uh, play with your connectors, such as these right here. So here's an example of 4-in-1 ESC right here. Um, instead of having to, you know, replace them kind of like a puzzle where they would match up, I'd recommend you just cut them off and just solder and you're good to go. And the way these would solder is we're going to do a th theoretical run on this ESC right now. So we'll say it starts off with uh, ground and then battery voltage and then motors one, two, three, four, five, or sorry, one, two, three, four, and then current. For example, if this ESC, the first one is ground here, then we're going to have to find the ground on these pads and install it. So that would be on this pad right here. Next, let's just say theoretically again on this ESC, the second wire, the second wire down is going to be the battery voltage and that will be installed on the second pad over, which would be right here. So now with these two pads, we're able to initialize everything on the board. It's very important you do that. Now, if this ESC had a five volt regulator on board, you don't want to take the five volt line and install it here. Um, it's not going to burn, but it's not going to work. So you want to get battery voltage right into this guy right there. Next thing we have is motors one, two, three, and four. And let's just pretend that the motor one starts from, let's just say this side. So I would take, if this is motor one right now on the ESC, I'd cut it and I'd actually solder it to the motor one pad, which is this right here. And then the second one over is gonna be motor two. Then I'd salt to the next pad over, which is uh, this one right here. And then if it's motor three, again, the next one over, and then until we get to motor four. Now, usually on these four and one ESCs, it'll have one wire for the current. Let's say theoretically, it's this one here, and it'll tell you in the pinouts of the ESC, that would go right there to CUR. So that would be the current right here. And that's how you'd get the current information down to your OSD. So the leftover pads here are for LED and buzzers. So if you wanted to install a buzzer on this uh, flight controller, what you'd want to do is you want to find the five volt, which is going to be this one right here. And then you're going to want to go to uh, the negative of the buzzer to be installed here. You don't want it to be installed on ground because this is what initializes the buzzer. So five volt here for the buzzer and the ground of the buzzer right there. LED, if you want to install LEDs, RGB LEDs to be exact, you have the ground right here, which is the black wire. Then we have five volt and then we have the LED signal. So this is the signal, the digital input, whatever it might be called on your LEDs, because this pad will be uh, giving out the information onto what color the RGB LEDs should turn into. So also some ESCs have telemetry, especially BLH32, if you wanted that, where you'd want to put it is right here on R6, not T6. So we have another UART here. You would put that on R6. And here we have another motor five and six. These are extras you could remap to something else, uh, which is something really nice to have on board here and like that we just went over every single pad on this board now also if you are flashing this for some reason and your pc turned off you disconnected the usb and it's not booting anymore or it's not connecting to beta flight what you'd want to do is you see this button right here it's called the boot button it's kind of like a recovery button you hold that in you plug in the usb and you just reflash it and you're good to go into that perspective so right now they have three flavors of these a 20 by 20 and 230 by 30s i'll have them all linked down below they're actually at a really great price in my opinion and uh so far they've been doing
doing a pretty good job in the market and I'm really happy that they're doing that and they're not really cutting any corners and these boards look of really great quality in terms of execution in the manufacturer they're using um, especially on these tiny components and uh, that's something really good and something you always want to see here and and again guys everything's linked down below if you can check those out it's great support the channel and I'll see you in the next one peace out guys